uh, there's been suddenly a huge demand for bullish options. Yeah, the concern is that somehow the U.S. might get drawn into this conflict in the Middle East, and that would lead to a number of scenarios, most likely an interruption in oil supply, and that is causing both oil and gas, at least in the New York session, to rise to intraday highs. And then we're seeing an extension of that, as just mentioned, in the Asia session with West Texas Intermediate now above 90 and on track for a 3% weekly gain. The Brent skew calls, those are bullish options that Brent goes higher, are at the highest we've seen uh, really since April 2022, which, as you may recall, is when Russia had invaded Ukraine and also spiked oil. At that point, it went up to almost $120 a barrel. It was a very volatile session in the uh, New York trading. Uh, it seemed that oil moved up and down on every report of a new attack in uh, the Mideast region, and traders say that's the way it's going to be going forward. The fact that the U.S. entered into a deal with Venezuela to uh, remove or at least suspend some of these sanctions and allow more oil to be exported from that region, this in return for the country allowing more freer elections to go forward. Uh, this is seen as a minor positive, and let's say it will enable Venezuela to pump 200,000 more barrels a day, or roughly a 25 percent jump in output. But a lot of analysts say that's just a, a, a drop in the bucket of what's required uh, globally for the oil markets. They're very tight because of the OPEC plus policy to extend the their voluntary curbs till the end of the year. OPEC Plus saying they don't see the event uh, involving Venezuela as altering their policy at all. We also have U.S. inventory data showing that the Oklahoma hub, where a lot of oil is stored, is at a nine-year low. And uh, to quote Ed Moya, a well-followed uh, oil analyst, he says this is only a Band-Aid solution for the very tight market we're seeing in oil. We're also watching base metals, I mean, on that U.S. and E.U. lack of agreement that could lead to more tariffs. Yeah, there was an expectation that they were in the final stage of reaching an agreement. Uh, the accord is needed to avoid the return of Trump-era levies. And the E.U. and U.S. are now going to hold a summit in Washington Friday. But word uh, that they uh, were having trouble uh, and there was another delay caused a lot of uh, steel stocks uh, to initially surge after hours. We're not seeing that much of a gain as more information comes out. Basically, the deadlock deprives U.S. President Joe Biden, the European uh, Commission uh, President Ursula von der Leyen, and European Council President Charles Michel from being able to announce a deal on the so-called global arrangement on sustainable steel and aluminum. And uh, the meeting is uh, hoped, according to people close to the matter, to cause some kind of breakthrough in the deadlock. Uh, both sides uh, are poised to keep negotiating until a year-end deadline. Uh, but again, this is another uh, pressure on commodities, along with the uncertainty we're seeing because of geopolitical concerns.